episode 22 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in Northwest London. You can find me online on Twitter and Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I'm Nikki Hippie on Ravelry and if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the groups tab you will find our group right there. The show notes as always will be on my blog. You can find the links to everything I just mentioned just down below there. I would like to kick off with saying a massive welcome to any new viewers. I always really appreciate you giving the podcast a go, thank you. And of course, a massive welcome back to my returning viewers. I appreciate you coming back week after week, thank you so much. Just a reminder that the Best Year Ever Cow is still running. It will be running the entirety of 2017 and I will link to all the rules and whatnot in the show notes if you would like to take part. This week's tea is good old Yorkshire Gold and I'm about halfway through already. <laughs> it's been that kind of week, guys. It really has. Um, there isn't loads for you this week. As I said, it's been a bit of a crazy week. Um, one of those weeks where I had lots already planned and then lots of stuff just sprang up out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, if I look a little bit like a rabbit caught in headlights, that's why. But my hay fever is finally starting to wind down. The sun is shining, mostly, <laughs> and next weekend will be a bank holiday weekend again, so I am not complaining, and let's move on to Whipped Up. As I said, this week has been pretty crazy. Um, we will come to more of that in Gold Power, because yes, there is some Gold Power this week, guys. But there are two projects I would like to share with you this week. First up is my gorgeous Shanghai Stripes. Um, I'm still plugging away at this. I'm on to about halfway through um, the next ombre. So I'm on the sort of mid orange before I head into the reds. And I actually worked on this section here while we went to watch Beauty and the Beast on Friday. Um, we have had to reschedule this so many times and we ended up finally seeing it on Friday, um, me and my old school friends, and it was absolutely magical. Um, I was going to do Here Be Spoilers this week um, to talk about it, but it was so good that I kind of feel like I need to see it again <laughs> and really process it before I talk about it. But spoiler alert, I loved it. Loved it. This was the first time I have ever worked on anything in the cinema. Um, I've never had the confidence before. I really wanted to take my cardigan, but I just thought that was madness because it's dark and it's a dark cardigan. And this was actually really good because I could feel my way. I'm just looking at it and I don't think I made any mistakes. <laughs> I didn't just randomly miss off a load of stitches. So it looks fine and I think I think crochet blankets might be my go-to for cinema knitting. This is really good. So when I inevitably go back to see Beauty and the Beast again, I will I will be taking this. So um, I actually went with the friend um, who does not know she is receiving this. I just thought I was working on a blanket for myself. And she did say she thought it was lovely. And when I give it to her, I'll be able to say this was made when we went to see Beauty and the Beast together. Next up is My Hortensia by Andy Satterland, although I have now named it My Librarian Cardigan because I think that's the look I'm going to be going for when I wear this. Um, and as you can see, it still doesn't look much like a cardigan. <laughs> I've got some armholes just there, but I'm using a very short cable because I can't find a longer one that I'm not already using on something else, so it's really squished up. I think I am going to order a longer cable because then I'd be able to try it on, which would be really nice. The yellow yarn that you can see dangling here, which is basically making it look a horrendous mess, <laughs> is actually the waist yarn that I put um, the upper back and the two sides on. And I decided to leave it in um, because it makes a good lifeline. Um, I will be pulling it out, you know, I think that's quite pretty, the yellow with the purple, but I will be pulling that out um, when, I'm, when I have the body finished. So, yeah, at the moment I've just got these random bits of yellow yarn dangling, really. I am so happy with this knit. So, so happy. Um, it was one of my yearly goals to get some more garments in my wardrobe. And this is going to be a well-loved cardigan. I'm already thinking I might like to make it a different colour. 
Um, it's just knitting up so quickly. It's the combination of it being a cropped cardigan and a worsted weight yarn, but it's just a dream. It's a dream to knit. It's such an easy pattern to follow. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Um, and I'm really hoping uh, that I will have the full body to show you um, in the next podcast with maybe a sleeve attached. And as I said, next week is a long weekend, so I think I might get quite a good chunk of this finished. But yeah, sadly, that's all I've been working on this week. Um, I had so many good intentions to do loads of other projects, but unfortunately, life got in the way slightly this week. Um, in positive ways, but, you know, it's still... It's knitting time, guys. Just eating into my knitting time. One thing that did arrive this week that I was so, so, so eager to share with you was my Reddit yarn exchange gift. Now, as you know, I took part in the Reddit Yarn Exchange. I sent a skein of Triskillian yarn with um, a Kettle Yarn Co Notions bag, God, I almost forgot then. <laughs> and um, that was very happily received. And I received mine this week. Look how beautiful this skein of yarn is. I have two of these. This poor one obviously got a little bit squished in transit. Um, but this is Fire Song Shawnee Silk. And it's hand dyed 100% silk. And it is so beautiful. Just look at that. And I do think that this would make a beautiful dryad hat. That was the pattern that my yarn swap partner uh, gifted to me while I waited for it to arrive. And I do think that this is so mermaidy and beautiful and it's not so crazy variegated that you'd lose the textured stitches. So I am wondering if maybe, I'm going to do an Amy Florence now, but I wonder if maybe this should be my dryad hat. Or some really magical hand warmers, wrist warmers in a kind of lacy, or a shawl. I don't know, basically. I don't know what I am going to do with these, but these are absolutely stunning. They are so, so beautiful. The lovely lady who sent me these did send me a leaflet, and uh, because I am incredibly nosy, I actually looked up the Fire Song um, website, and it's, it's so beautiful. There's weaving, um, hand dyeing, uh, the lady who runs it raises her own sheep. Um, I believe they're BFL sheep, maybe. Um, but this is gorgeous. This is exactly what I wanted to receive. I wanted to receive something I wouldn't be able to get here in England. And this is so of its place. <sighs> I just love it. I just love it. I can't wait to put this into my stash on Ravelry. Look how beautiful it is. And it's just so soft and... <sighs> if you have any ideas for what this should grow up to be, please let me know. Um, I don't know if they should be wrist warmers because they'll get kind of used. Um, I don't know if it would make a good hat. I don't know if I should maybe, oh, that's really nice actually. Maybe I should make a cowl. It's just beautiful. Oh. So while it may not have been a very busy knitty week or very busy crochet week, it has obviously been a very good yarn week for me, um, but I did spend some time working on my planning system this week. So let's move on to goal power. So last week I said that I was inspired by Cece of the Geeky Girls Knit, um, who is doing a vlog every day in April and did one about her bullet journal. And I was really inspired by it because she was using a traveller's notebook and she had three little notebooks inside that. Each one had a different purpose and they could just be swapped out when they got filled up. And it was, to me, it looked like a really flexible, useful, practical system. I kind of identified why I fell out of love with my bullet journal. Um, and that was because I found it incredibly frustrating to have to draw out the month ahead every month. And I always got to it too late. Um, and there would always be a thing of like, oh, you know, I know there was something I needed to fill in here. What was it? Um, and I also knew that I didn't want to draw them all out at the beginning of the year. And it just, because bullet journaling is not my hobby, it is something I use as a practical system. It wasn't something that I was going to cheerfully give my time to. Um, I was also 
kind of getting a bit frustrated with the fact that it wasn't pretty because as I say I don't take the time to make it pretty and I don't want to but that doesn't mean I don't want it to be pretty so I want to have my cake and eat it basically um, so I thought maybe a traveller's notebook system would work I could um, get a little diary to put in the front and then have some plain notebooks throughout maybe get some washi tape some stickers and I floated this idea with Rich, who said, but you have a traveller's notebook. You tried that. It didn't work. And he was right. I think I was kind of taken away with the idea of how pretty it was going to be. And I was going to get this beautiful cover. And yeah, I had a little look online for some inspiration. And I went to my favourite place, which is bohoberry.com. We have now got a gold power thread in the... Tea and Possibilities group on Ravelry, where we can share some ideas. And I did mention Boho Berry there, with the disclaimer that she will make you want to bullet journal. <laughs> Her bullet journal is practical, um, efficient, and beautiful. Um, she's an incredibly talented artist. She makes it look stunning. And I had a moment of like, oh, maybe what I need is to go back to my bullet journal. Maybe I just need to get rid of this one that's got kind of a bit tired and ugly and there's only got like a few pages left and start a new one. And then I tried to be very honest with myself and the fact of the matter is that with my bullet journal I was inspired by Boho Berry, I made it look beautiful, I couldn't sustain it and that's why I'm where I am now. So Richard said well, why don't you just go back to having a file of facts? So I decided that that's what I needed to do, but I looked at it and it was so uninspiring. And I was like, there's got to be nicer inserts than this. And that's how I discovered Kiki K. Now I am aware saying I discovered Kiki K is kind of nonsensical because it's been around for ages and everyone has heard of it and I've heard of it, but it just never really got onto my radar in a way that I wanted to go and have a look. So I decided to pop into the shop near where I work and I was only going to get some inspiration. I came out with this. This is their um, personal size planner. It's a really good size, as you can see, it's not too big. I was considering getting the A5 size, but when I saw it, I just thought there's no way I'm carrying that around in my bag. Just no, it's just not worth the back problems it would give me. And this is actually quite a nice size, as you can see. I have started setting this up. I am not finished, but I will show you what I've done so far. So, in the front here, we have got a to-do list. I am going to use that just to jot down things I need to buy from the shops on the way home. Little reminders, because it's right at the front there. I've got some stickers that came free, which I'm keeping in here because I don't need them at the moment. And there were about six dividers in here, and I cut that down to three. Um, we've got calendar to do, and I've kept one of the plain ones here. So starting with the calendar, I've got some paper clips, um, which I'm going to use to mark where I am in my planner. And I got an 18-month calendar, but that doesn't start till June, so I'm using the perpetual calendar that it came with. Um, this is May, and I've just filled out what I've got planned in May. And I am um, going to get some washi tape because I saw someone used a tip of they use washi tape to block off the days that are holidays. And I thought that looked really pretty, nice and simple, so I'm going to do that. Then of course we come to June. Now I haven't filled this out yet because I want to see how I get on with the uh, monthly spread calendar. Because this calendar actually comes with a week on two pages as well. So I want to see... Do I need this? Is it going to be handy to have a month at a glance? Or do I just want the week um, over two page calendar? So I'm kind of playing with that in May to see how I feel. So I'm not going to waste my time filling this out just yet. With my week on a two page calendar, I'm using highlighters. Um, I'm going to just pop in what I'm doing and highlight them. This is going to grab my attention a lot more. Um, I've highlighted here, I've got a haircut planned. Um, and I've just highlighted it so that it will grab my attention. There's a little slot down the bottom here for birthdays. I will probably highlight those in a different colour. Um, it's a really nice and simple way of making it bright and cheerful, but without taking up loads of time. Next up, we have the to-do list section, and this is going to be my bullet journal. I've added a couple of things to my bullet journal. I've added front page of yearly plans. 
And I've got monthly goals. I usually don't write down my monthly goals and I'm, again, I'm playing with this in May to see how I get on with it. My plan is to write down a maximum of three monthly goals for that month. Just things that need to get done. They don't have to be particularly big things, but things that are gonna make me ultimately move closer to those yearly goals. I then popped my paperclip in so that I can go straight to where I currently am in my bullet journal. And I've already written down my week commencing bullet journal for the coming week. What I will do throughout the week then is pull from that list to write my daily lists. As you can see, so far I've gone completely back to basics. I am literally just using my calendar to pop in reminders for birthdays, for meetings, for holidays. And I am using my bullet journal basically as it is described um, on bulletjournal.com. I find that works for me. I really enjoy using the um, weekly list. I'm hoping that monthly is gonna be as useful for me. Um, but I really enjoy using it because it just gives me an overview of the week. I can pull from it, I can add things to it. It's really useful. The only issue I have with this is it's lined paper. I know you can't get Kiki K graph paper. I don't know really where to get graph paper um, that will fit in here if you have any recommendations please let me know because I do prefer bullet journaling with graph paper um, but even if I do get some there's quite a lot of paper in here so I am going to use up before I buy any more seems a waste not to really my very last divider I have not filled in yet this is going to be my future log and this is going to take a little bit more planning than my previous two sections in here I am basically going to fill in all my plans for the future that need, need their own space. I'm gonna start off with financial plans. I've said before, Rich and I are saving to buy a house. Um, that doesn't just happen by magic, unfortunately. Um, so we do need to sit down and kind of plan how much more do we need to save? What is our you know deadline for saving? And uh, what, what does that mean per month that we need to put away? And I'm going to fill that out here and check in every month to make sure I'm on target, and if I'm not, adjust. I'm also going to put in here plans for um, our new home. Uh, we are in the process of finding a place, and this will be where I jot down, you know, things I need to buy, things I need to make, measurements we need to take, and things like that. So, all things that don't really have a home in my bullet journal, because my bullet journal for me is immediate, um, and as soon as those things are ticked off, they're dead, they're done. Um, and to be honest with you, once I've completed a page in my bullet journal, I'm probably just gonna rip it out and throw it away. I know that bullet journaling is supposed to help you create a log of what you've done and like nice memories. I use it as a to-do list system. I don't need them in here. Um, I might keep the previous weeks and that's it. I'll see how that goes. But I just don't fancy carrying around a lot of dead lists. Whereas my future log needs to be separate because it's it's a very much an ongoing long-term uh, project. So anything that is long-term is going to go in there. Finally, there is this really helpful notepad at the back. And I am jotting down on here things I want to talk about in the podcast. Things occur to me all the time while I'm out and about, um, while I'm working on something. I usually have my diary to hand and it's just quick to jot it down in here and then I can just rip it out when I've done my show notes. Um, I am very much not precious about my planning. I think that's why the decoration and making it so pretty just doesn't work for me. I'm just not that bothered. I think it looks great. I love when people do beautiful things and I'm hoping that just using the highlighters and the pretty Kiki K pages will keep me happy um, aesthetically, but ultimately I use it as a practical system. It's not something that I need to be beautiful. It would be nice, but it's not necessary for what I need it for. I'm really hoping that having a really good planning system again is going to help me with the amount of stuff I have on my plate. Life feels incredibly busy at the moment. Um, I was at a writing workshop yesterday. I then went straight on to the baby shower. I am filming and editing today before I go out this afternoon. Um, it's been a very busy week and I've been out quite often after work. 
you get the picture. I have said before that I'm an introvert, I very much need me time, and I'm hoping that having a planner, um, and perhaps this is where the monthly view will be very useful, so I can see where my time is getting congested and where I need to make some more space. It's a fairly short episode this week. I feel like my episode lengths um, go up and down like Tower Bridge, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. They tend to vary based on content, and obviously if I haven't had a busy week um, knit, knit, knitting wise, then I don't have the content to share. Um, and it also sometimes is just a time pressure thing, and it's a bit of a combination of both this week. I am so looking forward to next weekend. We have no plans except that we are going to go out for a nice meal on one of those three days. Maybe I will see if anyone's available to go and see Beauty and the Beast again. Maybe I'll go and see it on my own. But ultimately I am clearing my weekend. It's going to be relaxing and lovely and just really, really calm. I hope that you have an amazing week. I hope you get lots knit. I hope you get lots crocheted. And I hope you have lots of cups of tea. I will see you next week for our bank holiday special. Take care.